For today's video, I want to share a recipe that I found on the Zero Waste Chef over a year ago, and since then I've made three to four huge batches of this stuff. I love it, it allows me to use up something which normally would just go straight into the compost, and it's really, really easy. All you need to start off with are apples. These can be apples that you found in your garden, or bought, it can be a variety, or it can be all just the same ones. All you're going to need are the peels. So normally what I do is I try and time this at the same time as I'm dehydrating a whole load of apples. One of the things that I'll use is an apple peeler because I like to do this in huge batches. If I do this by hand, it's going to take me forever. It also means that when I cut up the apple, it's going to be different thicknesses. And especially with a dehydrator, I want the thickness to be the same. Otherwise, some of those apples are going to be super, super crispy and some of them are still going to be quite squishy and I don't want that. This makes it really easy. Just one go, peel them, cut them in half, lay it out on the tray and then pop it all in the dehydrator till they're dehydrated. So that's the fleshy part of the apple covered, but for the rest of this, this is what we're going to be using to make the apple cider vinegar. The cores and the peels are just going to go straight into a large glass jar. This one's 1.5 litres, but any size is going to do. You just want to make sure that that jar is at least halfway full with any kind of apple scraps. If you want to add some of the flesh from the apples, you can go ahead. You just need the apple, and there are quite a few other fruits you could do this with as well. Even pineapple was mentioned on the Zero Waste Chef blog, so maybe check that out if you want to see a few other variations. I'm going to fill up that jar as much as I can and lay out some more trays to dehydrate. Now that that jar's filled up a little bit beyond half with the cores and the peels, I'm going to start adding water. You could add this in a different order if you want. You could add the sugar first and then the water, but there are two different ways that you can deal with this part. Because as you can see, the apple peels are floating up to the surface. You can leave it like that. If you do leave the apple peels like that, you're going to need to stir it a few times a day to make sure that no mould can grow on the surface if there's any apples up in the air. I'm going to add some sugar. Now, I add a lot of sugar because I like the ferment to really get a move on. You can get away with just one spoon per litre. Some people don't even do that and they just let the natural sugars in the apple peels do the job. But like I said, I'm a little bit impatient. I like the ferment to get a move on. I also don't like taking the jar down to mix it. So what I do is I put a weight on top of it, in this case, an old glass jar that's been cleaned and disinfected on top of that, made sure that there's no peels floating up on the surface. And then I put a muslin over it with an elastic band because it still needs to be exposed to the air. Every few days I might check it just to make sure there's nothing growing on the surface other than a SCOBY. SCOBY, that's good, that won't hurt it at all. You just want to make sure that there's nothing like mould growing on the surface. And you'll be able to tell because the smell won't be right. If there's apple in there, it's going to have a bit of a sweet smell. Once it starts to ferment and turn into vinegar, it's going to have a vinegary smell. Anything that smells mouldy or off to you, don't risk it. If you're not sure, leave it a few days. If it's doing fine, within a few days, you'll be able to tell very easily if it's turned into vinegar or if it's started to mold. If you're still not sure, then just throw it away. It's not worth the risk. Start again and maybe add a little bit more sugar just so that it starts to ferment faster. And then next time, once you start to get better at being able to tell from the smells how the ferment is going, you might find that you add less and less sugar over time. Another way around that I'll sometimes make this is I'll do it in a fermenting jar. And what I like about these is they have some weights which are made for exactly that size jar. And it does make it a little bit easier and means that I use less of my spare jars to hold down apple peels. But either method works, whatever you have to hand is going to work just fine. You don't have to buy special equipment. You're almost definitely going to have stuff in your kitchen which you can use now. Don't be surprised if on the first day or two you don't really see much going on, but on the third day you should start to see a nice little stream of bubbles just going up to the very top, and if you sit in a very quiet room with this, you are going to hear these little bloop bloop sounds. So do remember that you have a ferment and don't freak yourself out when you hear strange noises. This is ready once you can see that the bubbles have stopped bubbling away, there's that smell of vinegar. Don't worry if it's not incredibly strong at first, the older the vinegar is, the more potent that smell is going to become. The main thing you need to avoid is the bubbles, because if you pop this in a jar and seal it, and it's still bubbling, that jar could explode. This is why when I'm making it, I'll put the muslin over the top, this will stop any flies or anything like that going for it, it's going to allow it to ferment, and I'm not going to have a small explosion going on in my kitchen. 
Two weeks later, it smells very strongly of vinegar, it's stopped bubbling and it's ready to bottle. One thing I do want to point out though, is don't confuse mold with mother of vinegar. Mother of vinegar is what's turning the whole thing into vinegar and this is going to be a clear, maybe slightly milky color that's gelatinous. It shouldn't look furry, it shouldn't look moldy. It will either form a jelly-like substance over the very top of the vinegar or it's going to have these little strings like you can see here. And that's a good thing, that's what we want, that's what we want for the vinegar. So if you see this, don't worry about it. It's actually what's making your vinegar and it's not bad. If you want to store this all you need is a funnel a bit of cloth to strain this through and make sure that there's no bits of scoby no mother and no bits of apple which are going to end up in the jar it won't hurt you if that ends up in the jar but it doesn't look very slightly if there's these strange little bits floating at the bottom or the top of the bottle as for the color of the vinegar depending on the kind of fruit that you use it is going to be a different color if you use mainly red apples that color is going to come through as very pale pink but because i use a mixture that green tends to overpower everything and you get a very almost pale lime green color and that's one of the things i like about it is i can tell what i use depending on the color of the vinegar now for storing it what i'll do if i'm absolutely sure that that vinegar has stopped fermenting is i'll just pop a cork at the top of the demijohn if i'm not sure what i'll do is i'll put an airlock on the very top and you can do this just to be safe that way if there's any air that's still getting produced it's just going to bubble up to the top and you're not going to have any explosions or if you want to cork it just check it put it out in an open space where you can see it open the top every so often and you'll be absolutely fine and you'll constantly have a fresh supply of nice homemade vinegar